so it's almost it. But um, when I show you do it, it's usually like a They're about to have a um, legal panel. Right, Jake? Legal panel? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Legal panel. Yeah. <laughs> Marsha eating again. <laughs> oh, it's cake time. Where's the cake? Let's go get some cake. Looks like I might be too late. Oh, good. They got all of the latest copy. Awesome. We got it all. Is this the human solution booth? Well, it's that too. The stuff down here. These are brand new. I was like, where'd they get this stuff? If it's Tom oh, Corby, then I know he got here. those from me. Awesome. Yeah. This, this human is solution. Up here and then... Who do I talk to about the human solution? Probably Tom Corby. Did you want to say something about the human solution, Tom? Uh, the, the human solution? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, let's yeah, face the so, sun. Uh, oh my god, I, they know that I can expound for hours about human solution. Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to come back because I was just filling in till the panel started, but it's starting. But All right. I'm going to come back to the booth in a minute and we'll, we'll talk about human solution. That's beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll, we can expound on she has a awesome. civil Maybe it wasn't covered perfectly from the plain side of view. Maybe law enforcement came in and told them they needed to check things out or do a code enforcement check, and then maybe they came back in and did something worse. So, Sherry interviewed um, uh, Dr. or uh, I'm sorry, Jennifer Annie not too recently, and so. Can you, can you, Sherry, can you speak to the, some of the child custody cases that Sherry's handling? Again, handling, yeah, I just, can, you, can everybody hear me? A little okay. closer. And I'm just going to talk because I can project. I am writing a new book right now, which is Mary Jane, The Complete Guide to Marijuana for Women, and one of the chapters, of course, and, uh, deals with parenting issues. So I interviewed Jen Annie for that chapter, and she had a lot of great words of wisdom for parents. Uh, about these CPS issues. One of the first things she mentioned is it really makes a huge difference where you live, especially in California, uh, where she lives in Marin County. She said it really doesn't matter. They don't mind. You can use it for medicinal use. You can even use it for recreational use. They don't have a problem with it. You go to Butte County, to Hama County, and they have zero tolerance. And I mean zero. They'll come in for any reason. So that's the first thing you need to understand is to really survey the legal uh, landscape where you live. The other thing she stressed is if you are, if you're in a state that is illegal, you might want to think twice about it because the consequences can be so serious. You can have your children removed. That's not to say it can't happen in California, and it's not to say it doesn't happen in California. It certainly does. But at least in California, if you have your medical card, your attorney has something to defend you on because she can go and fight for you and fight for your rights and for the rights of your children. But I asked Jen what can parents do to protect themselves before there's problems. You know, let's be proactive and not wait for CPS to come crashing to our doors and ripping our children's out, children out of our arms. Um, and she, she had some really good tips about that. And it's, it really goes to establishing yourself as a good parent. No matter whether it's cannabis or prescription drugs or alcohol, anything can be used against you. And it, you want to prove that your child is well cared for and that this is not presenting a detriment to your child. Now, how can you do that? You want to establish good relationships with your pediatrician so they know that you care about your children. They're getting regular pediatric care. They, they know you on a name, first name basis. 
Same with things like teachers, uh, daycare workers, things like that. Anybody that might be called upon to testify if the worst should ever happen. And, and let's face it, most people are not going to have to deal with this. But if you do have to deal with this, it's a, it's a complete nightmare and you don't want your children taken away. So you want to really establish a trail that shows you as a good, responsible parent. She said you can't afford to be a flake. Um, if you're in one of these counties where there's zero tolerance, if your kid goes into school and complains that he's hungry or didn't have breakfast, that's a reason for CPS to visit you. So it's a kind of like in dealing with the police. You, you don't want to give the police an excuse to come visit you, and you don't want to give Child Protective Services an excuse to come visit you. So establish yourself as a, a not as a flake, as a good parent that really cares about their child and that you're really establishing from day one that this in no way hurts your child in any way, shape, or form, even if you're open about it. So those are some of the most important things you can do. But especially check the legal landscape where you live and what, how they are dealing with these cases because it varies completely 180 degrees depending on where you live and how it's going to be treated. Awesome. And this is Lynette Davies. Um, she um, is one of the directors at Canicare, also uh, founder of Crusaders for Patients' Rights. Mm -hmm. Lynette, how do you feel about that subject in Sacramento County area? Yeah. <coughs> Can Maybe not. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, Sacramento County is one of the favored counties because we're actually a little bit luckier there in Sacramento County. Sacramento County will actually take a look. Cut, we've got several patients that they've actually come in that are growing. If you're, if you're responsible, we haven't had any DPS issues in Sacramento County that I'm aware of. My patient base has basically been protected. But in order to actually stop this from happening, the best thing that we can do is actually pass either legislation or sign on one of the initiatives that are coming out, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. I've worked extensively in legislation at the state capitol to try to get protections for patients. This is one of the feared entities. I kid you not, you want to see reefer madness come alive and well? Walk into one of the um, counties, cities, or even the state capitol and bring up children in cannabis. They'll go nuts. They'll go nuts. There's no way we can get through legislation and get any protections for parents. So the best way of doing this is to put it on initiative and pass it ourselves. We have that capability. Awesome. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Dr. Jenkins? Um, yes. So um, we definitely need regulations um, when it comes to uh, medical cannabis in the state of California. And that's really the only way that um, we're going to be able to overcome these issues with CPS, um, with um, having our children at risk. Um, it's a subject that's near and dear to my heart because, like I said, I, I do consult a number of children that are using CBD therapy to control their seizures and, um, and using it in other therapeutic um, in therapeutic ways, but it does vary very widely um, the type of support system that you have, um, whether you're upfront and honest about it, whether you actually talk with your doctors, keep them in the loop, have someone that you're getting advice from, especially when it comes to the care of your children. Um, but again, the only way that we're really going to see any real improvement in this area is with actually regulating that um, within the state of California. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, Lynette, speaking of regulation, would you like to speak on the current two initiatives that we have? Uh, to go on the ballot? We do. We have one that's already been approved from the um, Attorney General's office. It's a very, very basic, it's more of a Jack Herrera. This is where the initiative actually came from. And it's, for us, what it does, it legalizes or it decriminalizes cannabis throughout the state of California. And it, it does protect the parents. It takes sales tax off of um, medical. So it separates the medical from the recreational use. It has a small tax, can never be more than 10% on recreational use. The 10%, 50% of that goes to research for medical issues. Um, I'm strongly supporting this, this initiative. I really feel that if we can get those 500,000 votes or those 500,000 signatures and get it on the ballot, that the people are, will be safer. If you take a look at the other one, we have another one that is 25 pages long. It's a full regulation bill. And this one has been worked on all year long, all the way across the state. We've looked at every type of issues that you could come across. Anything from discrimination in the workplace, 
Um, we've looked at legal issues about making sure that patients for $10 will be able to expunge their records for if they've ever had any type of cannabis conviction on a person to person basis. Um, there's protections for the workplace so that you'll never have to worry about being drug tested and said that your cannabis is an illegal drug. Those issues have all been addressed and most of them are addressed in both of these legislation or these initiatives that are coming through. So I strongly support both of them. They we're expecting the second one to come out on December 23rd to the 28th and then we will have a period of time that we can get those 500,000 signatures, get it on the ballot. I wouldn't look at it as one being good and one being bad. They are complementary to each other. Because I'm telling you right now from working at the state legislation, if you're depending on your politicians to come forward and give you good rules and regulations, you are screwed. Because they pay, they, they are working for the corporations that are funding them. And that is not in their benefit to work for the patients. I don't care what they tell you because I see it. So once you get these two initiatives, I know that we have some circulation through here. If somebody has not signed it, you need to be a registered voter. Please sign these, put it in front of the people because we can do a better job. And if you're not a registered voter, you can register here too. Does it matter what county? Yes, it, it does. But it, all we do is have a signal, um, a separate county one there. I mean, they can still take your signature right here, which is on a separate seat of paper. 